So in the last video, uh, what we looked at was what two-dimensional lines could actually be, okay, um, and what they could look like and how they would interact with each other. We saw that two lines could either intersect at one point or they could be parallel. And if they intersect at one point and they intersect at 90 degrees, then we call them perpendicular. So really it's now, if you've got the equation of a line, can you, or the equation of two lines rather, can you determine whether they are parallel or whether they are perpendicular? Okay. So, the answer to that question is yes, you can, and this is a key skill that you need to be able to employ. So, if you've got, well let's deal with parallel lines first. If you've got two lines that are parallel, then effectively what this means is that they both have the same steepness, the same slope. They both have the same gradient, okay? So, really, it's just a case of they both have the same gradient, but this one has been moved up further than that one. So, if they have the same gradient, let's say they both have the gradient 3, then this one could be y equals 3x plus 10, while this one, the second one, could be y equals 3x plus 7 for example, okay? So, they both have the same gradient, which is given, remember, by the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, and it's just that the y-intercept is a different number. So if you come across two equations that are written in this format, okay, where the gradient is the same, then those two lines must therefore be parallel. Um, Make sure you don't make the mistake of thinking like this. Um, let's say we've got y equals 3x plus 5, and y plus 3x equals 7. And you were asked, well, are these two lines parallel? You might want to think for a moment, uh, or pause this and think, right, why might, two stu why might a student think that these two lines are parallel? Okay? So you might want to have a think about that first. If not, you're continuing listening, <laughs> then if you think about it, they both have this 3x. The number in front of the x is the same. So therefore, they must be parallel. Not quite true, or not true at all, really. Uh, this one, if you take 3x from both sides and we get it into the format of mx plus c, then actually what we have is that we have 3 in the first equation and minus 3 in the second equation. So the gradients are different and so they are not parallel. You need to make sure you've got both of the equations into the form y equals mx plus c in order for you to be able to compare those two lines. Okay? So these are parallel. Okay? That's how you deal with parallel lines. The other version, or the other problem, is perpendicular lines. Okay? Now, perpendicular lines are the situation where you have two lines that intersect at a right angle. Okay? And I mentioned in the previous video that it has something to do with the gradients are the negative reciprocals of each other. Okay, so key words here, negative reciprocal. Okay, so what this would mean is that if you're thinking of, let's say we have a gradient of 2, so let's call the first gradient 2, so I'm using uh, m1 here, and let's call that 2, then the negative reciprocal of that number, let's make sure that we understand what both of these mean. I'm, I'm assuming that we know what negative means. So we've got a negative, okay, and 
The reciprocal, or we just change the sign, so if we'd started with minus 2, it would become positive 2, for example. And the reciprocal is 1 over that number. Okay, so reciprocal means 1 over. So actually, if m1 is 2, the first gradient is 2, then the second gradient will be minus 1 half. The negative reciprocal of 2 is minus 1 half. If you had a line with gradient 2 and a line with gradient minus 1 half, then those two lines are perpendicular. Okay, so y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals minus a half x plus 3. These are perpendicular. Okay, so um, let's go through a bit more of what negative reciprocals are. Okay, um, let's see. Um, if you had, so we already know that 2, the negative reciprocal, reciprocal is minus 1 half. If you had 10, then the negative reciprocal would be minus 1 over 10. Okay? If you had um, 1 third, then the negative reciprocal would be minus 1 over 1 third, which is the same as minus 3. Okay, because if you divide by a fraction, then remember you multiply by the reciprocal. And if you had, let's say, the uh, minus 0 0.4, for example, then the negative reciprocal of that would be positive 1 over 0 0.4. Now, 0 0.4 is 2 fifths. So, that is 5 halves. Okay? So, converting numbers into their negative reciprocals is something you need to be able to do. Um, remember, there's non-calculator, so you have to do it without. Um, so, using that, you can then do things like, well, okay, if you've got two lines, can you tell whether they are parallel perpendicular or neither, okay? So we're looking at parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And let's say we had um, y equals 4x minus 3, and um, 4y plus x equals 7, okay? Well, this line is already in the form y equals mx plus c, so that's great. This one isn't, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it, take x from both sides, divide through by 4, okay? So now I've got y equals 4x minus 3, and y equals minus a quarter x plus 7 quarters. And then it's asking, well, are they per parallel, are they perpendicular, or are they neither? We can see they're not parallel because 4 is not the same as minus a quarter. Um, if they are perpendicular, then if you multiply the two gradients together, you should get minus 1. You have to get minus 1. So if we get 4 times by minus a quarter, then actually this is minus 1, so they are perpendicular. And this would be the working that would be required here. Okay? So this is kind of like a quick run-through of how you can tell whether the two lines are parallel, how you can tell whether they're perpendicular, okay? So, it's just a case of making sure you know that the gradients need to be the same for parallel, and the two gradients need to multiply together and make minus one if they are to be perpendicular.